But a lot of local food, they've done a lot of neat, neat things. Um, so I, I, this is interesting. It's still kind of in uh, developing. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around these numbers and, and find out what other, what's the range in other school districts, what's going on. How, is it possible to, to, have a, um, to have this kind of great food and garden and everything and maybe even... Um, you know, what, what is it? Is it, uh, I mean, even if it's 50,000, even if it's 80,000, I think it's, wow, this is good. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to pay to have good, good program. It's not going to, if we want all this cheap stuff, then we get what we get. Um, okay, so on to other schools. Um, we, once we started our program with the, with the Price Lab, we applied and received a two-year grant from the Wellmark Foundation to work with Waterloo schools and with independent schools. And we just uh, received another small grant from the Leopold Center to work with three rural schools, Dyke, New Hartford, Waverly, and Sumner. And so I want to tell you what, what um, independence has done. They have they have, in season, have purchased sweet corn and strawberries and have frozen vast quantities of them. Um, they've hired a, uh, they, they've developed a farm-to-school packet for farmers. You know how you mentioned, have a workshop, but they have nice kind of literature for farmers saying, hey, you want to sell to school? Start reading this and come, yeah, I think this workshop, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plan something for our area maybe this winter, they have established a, a nice uh, school garden, and they also invited a dairy farmer to, to school who showed the kids how to make mozzarella cheese. <laughs> I mean, it's really exciting. All of this is so exciting. Waterloo schools, they've served already, they've served local tomatoes, grapes. They, they served 500 pounds of grapes, local grapes, last year. Peppers. Um, with we're, we're just begun, we've just begun working with Dyke, New Hartford School, and um, uh, they're starting. We, we have a spreadsheet of all the local growers and what they have, we, which we email on a weekly basis to this network of school food service directors so that they can quickly see who has what, what prices, because now they're supposed to have bids going out to two just make, make their work more complicated, but we're trying to make it easier. So again, this is the kind of, um, really the schools, what we're asking schools is a monumental task. Remember, we're all situated in a culture that doesn't feature local food. It's very hard for even a restaurant to find a lot of local food or a grocery store. It's, we need to develop, all kinds of things need to fall in place. So we really need to work with our schools to they're, they're in a hard situation to be able to supp find supplies as well. So it, it takes time, but it's just impressive what, what, has, what we heard, what the Iowa City School is already doing. In Sumner, this is a tiny little town in, in, you know, north of Waterloo. They already have established a school garden, have already buy, been buying tomatoes, peppers, onion, melons, apples, and cukes. Um, in Waverly, they, also they just started... And they're building a new school, and they're planning for more storage and more freezer space, which is always an issue. Um, so that's kind of a summary of what we're doing. And again, I can't um, tell you how exciting it is to, um, <laughs> to be part of this, this work. And I really think there's nothing better to do than uh, making our school food uh, healthier. And, Again, I'm, I'm grateful for the work that's going on in Iowa City. Thanks. <laughs>